In this video, we will talk about the principles of high quality assessments, part one. So, what is principles of high quality assessments or why do we need to have the principles of high quality assessments? So, principles of assessments will serve as a guidelines to ensure that the test is useful, appropriate, effective, and plausible. These principles are crucial to be taken into consideration because assessment is an important aspect of educational process which determines the level of accomplishments of students. The principles of high quality assessment empowers educators to be more effective by optimizing assessment use to boost student achievement. These are the first two principles that we are going to discuss in this video. Principle number one, clarity of learning targets. Principle number two, appropriate assessment methods. In this video, we will be guided by the following objectives. Number one, name the different learning targets. Number two, name appropriate assessment methods. Number three, match learning targets to appropriate methods. Let us begin with objective number one. Here in principle number one, which is the clarity of learning targets, learning targets are outcomes or objectives of the lesson of the teacher that wants his or her students to obtain or acquire at the end of the lesson. Thus, this must state clearly what students should know and be able to do at the end of the lesson. Because learning targets will be used by teachers as guide in creating assessment tools. So we must express our lesson objectives clearly following the SMART format and objective and observing the ABCD of writing objectives. Let us review ourselves on what is the ABCD of writing learning objectives. Letter A is the audience. Who will do the performance or behavior at the end of the lesson? Usually, it refers to the learner, students, or pupils. Letter B for behavior. It is the verb that describes what the learner will do after the instruction. Or it is the action, skill, competency, or learning that the that audience will accomplish as a result of your teaching or activity. Letter C is for condition. Under what conditions are needed to justify the behavior or what are the materials needed? D for degree. To what degree of mastery? How well must it be done? Should it be done with speed, accuracy, quality? So these are the A, B, C, D of learning objectives and letter B or behavior is the most important because this will be the basis in selecting the appropriate assessment. Here are the categories of learning targets according to Stiggins and Conklin's in 1992. Number one, knowledge learning target. These are the facts and concepts we want students to know. Number two, reasoning learning target. The ability of the students to use their knowledge to reason and solve problems. Number three, skills learning target. The ability of the students to demonstrate achievement related skills like conducting experiments, playing basketball, and operating computers. Number four, product learning targets. The ability of the students to create achievement related products such as written reports and art products. Number five, Effective learning target. This refers to attainment of effective traits such as attitudes, values, interest, and self-efficacy. It aims to improve students' attitude about school and other related aspects. Principle number one, which is clarity of learning targets, is very important because assessment can be made precise, accurate, and dependable only if what are to be achieved are clearly stated and feasible. So we are done with objective number one, name the different learning targets. So what are they? Again, 
First is the knowledge, learning target, which is very important. Number two is the reasoning. Number three is the skills, which is also very important. Number four is the product. And number five is the effect or effective. Now let us focus to the second objective, which is to name the appropriate assessment methods. Principle number two, appropriate assessment methods. These are strategies, techniques, tools, and instruments for collecting information to determine the extent to which learners demonstrate the expected learning outcomes. Assessment methods have to be appropriate all the time. This is not a choice, but a must in order to make assessment valid. Uh, again, this is not a choice, but a must. So this is very important. In order to provide evidence that educational outcomes are met, different forms of assessment are conducted, whether it is traditional paper and pencil test or alternative forms, it will always rely on the objectives of the lesson because again, appropriate assessment method is not a choice, but it is a must. Macmillan in 2007 categorized the appropriate assessment methods. Assessment methods can be categorized according to the nature and characteristics of each method. Macmillan in 2007 identified four major categories. First is selected response. Second is constructed response. Third is performance test. Number four is teacher observation and student self-assessment. Let's begin with number one, selected response format. Here, students select from a given set of options to answer a question or a problem. And selected response format can be easily be graded. The teacher can assess and score a great deal of content quickly. Objective tests are appropriate for assessing various levels of the hierarchy of educational objectives. This might include multiple choice, true or false test, or matching type test. Number two, constructed response format. This format is more useful in targeting higher levels of cognition. It is also subjective because it demands that students create or produce their own answers in response to a question, problem, or task. There are the, these are the subcategories of constructed response format. Number one is brief constructed response item. Number two is essay items or essay assessment. Number three is oral questioning. Letter A, brief constructed response. It refers to the objective supply. These are items that require only short responses from students. Examples include sentence completion where students fill in a blank at the end of the statement, short answer to open-ended questions, labeling a diagram, or answering math problems by showing their solutions. Second format in the constructed response format is essay test or essay assessment, which involve answering by writing series of sentences or paragraphs to satisfy a given question or proposition. Essay is a powerful in the sense that it allows students to express themselves and demonstrate their reasoning skills. And it can also assess students' grasp of higher level cognitive skills, particularly in the areas of application and higher than application. There are two types of essay test. First, restricted essay. It limits both the scope and the response which looks for specific details. Second, extended essay. It looks for the synthesizing skills. The writer has the freedom on the length of the essay and he or she has the freedom to select whatever necessary to be included in the essay based on the given theme or topic. But here is a catch. Students may write 
irrelevant or unnecessary things just to fill in blank spaces. When this happens, both teachers and students will experience difficulty and frustrations. The third type of constructed response format is oral questioning, which is also known as Socratic method. This is a form of dialogue discussion between individuals based on asking and answering questions to stimulate critical thinking and to draw out ideas and underlying presumptions that is according to Copeland in 2005. Oral questioning is appropriate when the objectives are to assess the student's stock knowledge and to determine the student's ability to communicate ideas in a coherent verbal sentences. In oral questioning, several factors need to be considered, such as the student's state of mind, feelings, anxiety, and nervousness in making oral presentations, which could affect students' true ability. Another thing is, when conducting oral questioning, I will recommend not to do it alphabetically because it will not give equal opportunity for everybody to participate. So you should call in random. Ask the question first, give a wait time, call the volunteers, and if the volunteers are the same persons, call the individuals who are not participating. And that is oral questioning. Now, the third category of the appropriate assessment method is per performance task or assessment. This requires students to perform a task, create a product, or both. They will perform a task and at the same time, there is an end product. Here, this is learning and doing and learning by doing. Performance tasks can be more valid indicators of students' knowledge and skills than other assessment methods, as this is known as the direct measure of skills or competence. Performance tasks are called authentic or alternative assessments because students are required to demonstrate what they can do through activities, problems, and exercises. Performance tasks provide opportunities for students to apply their knowledge and skills in real-world context. It can be product-based or skills-oriented. This means the students have to create or produce evidence of their learning or do something and exhibit their skills. Examples of product may include as book reports, maps, projects, poems, portfolios, audiovisual materials, charts, diagrams, worksheets, reflection papers, journals, and other creative endeavors. There are visible and tangible outputs at the end of the activity. Examples of skills include singing, dancing, reporting, playing basketball, role play and other creative endeavors. Usually there are no tangible and visible outputs after the activity. A scoring rubric containing the performance criteria is needed when grading performance tasks. These are tools that state the specific criteria and allow teachers and students to gather information and to make judgments about what students know and can do in relation to the outcomes. Product rating scale is one of the scoring rubric which contain list of the expected behaviors alongside with the rating scale, such as between one to five, one to 10. Second is performance test checklist, where it determines whether or not an individual behaves in a certain way when asked to complete a task. Usually it determines the presence or absence of the behavior. If it is present, you will earn a check. If not, of course, you will have an X. In product rating scale, if it is present, you also have to determine the extent in which the, the behavior is demonstrated. 
Is it in 1? Is it in 2? Or is it in 5? Fourth, teacher observations and student self-reports or assessments. Teacher observations basically record the frequency of student behaviors and activities. Activities of students such as responding to oral questions, behavior during individual and collaborative activities, these details can help educators plan activities, experiences, and interventions. This assessment method can also be used to assess the effectiveness of teaching strategies and academic interventions. Teacher observation is like using your common sense in the middle of teaching learning process if they can follow your lesson or if you are on the same page with your students. This should not greatly affect the final grade of the learners. This will be used for redefining your teaching methods or realignment of your teaching strategies to capture and sustain students' attention. This is also for reporting or giving feedbacking to parents, guardians, or caregivers. Student self-reports. It is a process where students are given a chance to reflect and rate their own work and judge how well they have performed in relation to a set of assessment criteria. Students track and evaluate their own progress or performance, making use of a self-rating checklist that lists several characteristics or activities presented to the subject of a study. And this is often employed by teachers when they want to diagnose or appraise the performance of students from the point of view of the students themselves. Examples of student self-reports are diary, journals, reflection papers, reaction papers. So everything that is a self-disclosure. So you report yourself. So that is the student self-reports. According to the Department of Education, learning targets are standards-based. It means that standards are assurance that teachers teach the standards and students aim to meet or even exceed the standards. And there are two kinds of standards. The first one is the content standards, which means to know and to understand. The second is the performance standards, which refers to the transfer of understanding. Content standards. Assessments in this area consider what the student knows, it is the knowledge, or what the students can do. It refers to the process or skills, and it answers the question how the students make sense of or constructs meaning out of the facts and information. And lastly, assessment in this area what the students understands, understandings, and the meanings made. Performance standards. Assessments in this area looks into how the students transfers his or her understanding to life situations in the form of products and performances or through authentic performance tasks. According to the DepEd, there are appropriate methods to knowledge target. Assessment in this area looks into how the students transfer his or her understanding to life situations in the substantive content of the curriculum, the facts, and the information that the student acquires. Here, it asks the question, how do we want them to express or provide evidence of what they know. This can be in a form of paper and pencil test using multiple choice, true or false, or matching type test. And these are the traditional assessments. Appropriate methods in skills or cognitive operations targets. Skills or cognitive operations require students to make use on facts and information on the purpose of constructing meanings and understanding. It includes utilizing basic communication skills, critical and analytic thinking skills. What do we want students to do with what they know? 
how do we want them to provide evidence of what they can do with what they know? So here are the suggested. It could be we ask them to outline, organize, analyze, interpret, translate, convert, or express information in another form or format. Draw analogies, construct graphs, models, flowcharts, and mind map or graphic organizers or transform a textual presentation into a diagram. Next is appropriate method in products and performance target. Products and performance are authentic products or performance tasks that a student is expected to do or demonstrate his or her understanding. What products or performances do we want students to produce as evidence of their learning and understanding? Or how do we want them to provide evidence that they can use or transfer their le learning to real life situations? It can be in a form of demo teaching, lesson plan making, practical, uh, on-the-job training, internship, portfolio making, public speaking, musical recital. So these are just the examples. Macmillan in 2007 presented the relationship of learning targets to its appropriate assessment methods. Based on the table presented by Macmillan in 2007, uh, selected response is the most appropriate when measuring knowledge targets. We can also make use of the essay and oral questioning, but the most appropriate is the selected response. When assessing or measuring deep understanding and reasoning, essay is the most important, and you can also make use of the performance task and oral questions or oral questioning. If you are going to measure the skills, the most appropriate are the performance task and the oral questioning, as well as the observation. And you can also make use of the student self-assessment. For product targets, the most appropriate would be performance task and oral questioning. And you can also make use of the observation techniques and the student self-assessment. The last target, the affect target, the most appropriate is oral questioning and student self-assessment. And you can also make use of the observation techniques and the performance task. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Watch out for part two.